Tonight guys, I'm staying overnight at the most haunted school in my city. This is the abandoned Marietta schoolhouse. If you guys did not know, and if you guys have not watched my last videos, this is actually located right across from one of the most haunted places in the USA, the Kia Mill. The Kia Mill burnt down years ago and so did the abandoned schoolhouse as well. And now it's been destructed and people say that ghosts from the mill linger to the schoolhouse and students who used to actually go to the school still have a presence till this day. And tonight, I am staying here overnight with a bag of ghost equipment to see if it really is haunted. So check this place out. It is pretty creepy. Like right now, it's pretty late at night and I have never been out here alone. I just heard something over there. I don't know if it's haunted already. I thought I heard something over there. I don't know if I should check that out. I'm putting my flashlight on. I'm scared. Is anyone here? There's like glass on the floor. I swear I heard somebody like in here or something. I don't know if it's a good idea to check it out, but I'm gonna look. Edward, what are you doing here? Oh. Are you just chilling at an abandoned school? What What are you What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? You're just, you're here at the middle of the night at this abandoned haunted school, just like chilling? You don't hit me up no more. So I decided, I know you were gonna film here. So. How did you know I was gonna come here? I have telekinesis. That's weird. Anyways, I, okay, so. We thought this would be a funny skit, okay? I was sitting there, and I, I kid you not, there's something wrong with this place. I heard a bunch of noises and I was sitting right there. No now way. now the skit is like, I thought it would be funny, but now I'm actually kind of Is that why you were like actually like sitting there like kind of freaked <laughs> out? Like, you were shaking. It took me a while to like get to you. Yeah. And I was like, I thought you were going to roll with the skit, but like I, you were actually- I felt, I felt something right now. What did you feel? I don't know. What, what was the story behind this you said? that? Who so this got burned down as well. Uh -huh. And there are spirits who apparently like people see the principal, they see students. There was a girl who lived lived across from this farmhouse and they say her spirit is attached to the school. Yeah. So they see her walking in and out through the hallways, but the mill as well has a lot of connection. The girl who died in the mill went to school she, she here, here too. Yeah. So they say that they've seen her ghost. The yeah. same girl who sits in the mill window walks the school around. Yeah, because we recently just filmed a video at the mill and I was like playing around. Yeah. But right now I was like, oh, let's do a funny six. You guys know I'm, I'm always like doing stupid stupid. I felt like a really but heavy I, energy right I now. Know, I was sitting there, I was like, this is gonna be funny. I'm gonna I'm a scare her. You could, yeah. you, could, you could definitely feel something. It just feels off. Because so. I, I never believe you when you say, oh, let's go to the haunted place. I'm like, all right, let's go. But as I was no. sitting there, it felt just like I, I'm not supposed to be here. Like there was like some weird yeah, like like a little unwelcoming like right now like i just feel heavy okay guys so i set down a bunch of equipment so the first one here is a new rem pod this one i actually got from ghost stop and it will change blue to show the temperature and if you go above it as you can see it takes a lot of force to set off the rem pod so if we can get a spirit to touch this tonight that would show that there is a heavy force here so we also have another rem pod this are you one. listen what are you really just gonna ignore it before we film that thing went on where I was okay. sitting at right now. You're just gonna ignore that. So I don't wanna freak everybody out, but like five seconds before we started filming, we Where I was sitting bear. at. Where you were sitting at, the teddy bear goes off by itself and it takes a lot of force. Let me show you guys how this one works. It went off on its own and I wish I would've had it on tape. Of course, it always happens off tape, but like you have to touch it like that for it to go off. Otherwise, it won't go off on its own, but I don't know how it did go off on its own like a little bit ago. And toys like this, actually do connect to children. So if there's a spirit of a child, they might want to play with the teddy bear. This is a spirit box. I have never used this before and it will scan through radios and such. So I'm kind of excited because we can get clear voices and possibly answers out of this. I don't know how clear it will be because it will be scanning through a lot of radio stations, but I want to try it out. And of course, last but not least over here, we have another different REM pod. This one is also pretty sensitive. So um, Edward, can you do us a favor? Yes. I don't know if anything will happen, but beforehand, I want you to be serious, okay? Yeah, I am serious right now. We're going to welcome the spirits into our session, okay? okay. So spirits, hello, I'm Lissy. Hi spirits, my name is Edward. And we mean you no harm. You're here today visiting and we would love to communicate with you. We just want to get to know you, get some answers. And if you'd like to communicate with us, we left down tools of equipment. We have REM pods, teddy bears, and you can touch any of them to show that you're here at any given time. If you'd like to give us a sign, could you please set off one of the equipment that we have put down before we can use the spirit box to communicate with you? Oh gosh! What? There's a bug, like... Where? It was huge. It almost hit you in the face right Where? as I said. <gasps> Wait, that went off? Did, 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 did you see it? It went on. You saw it though, right? Yeah, it turned on its own. You right when you asked, no. That's creepy. Okay. How does how does it work? What, what, what do you do? It can light up to red for a spirit to show. But how did it light up when it went all the I way to I red? I don't know. That must have been a sign that they're here. Ugh. 
Okay, dude, that's that's weird. If you'd like to show us another sign that you're here, you can touch that to show that you're here with us. Please. You can touch either of our REM pots or the teddy bear on the wall. <gasps> oh my gosh. They just touched it. I just got chills down my whole body. I'm not making that up. I don't know if you can see. Look at my leg. I have chills down look, my look, whole look, look, body. Look, 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 <laughs> like, I cannot make that I've up. I've never it's seen hot. that much chicken skin ever. That is creepy. Let me sit down right here. <gasps> it went off again? It went to red. You cannot make that up. You just sat right down. Right when I sat down. And you have it off. Literally right when I sat down, dude. How is that possible? I don't know. Right when I I told you. So you think there's something right there? There has to be. Should we use the spirit box there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it right there. I'm not. No, I'm not sitting there no so more. This actually was a classroom, this whole area right here. I don't know if you know this, but this was one of the main classrooms here. That was the entrance and that was a classroom. So this entrance here was where a lot of the children walked in on their first day of school and they went to the right or left. We're gonna use the spear box here to see if we get anything. This scans through a lot of radios. I'm a little nervous. So let me know if you guys hear any words or voices. Is there any spirits here that would like to say hello? Would you like to say your name? What the hell was that? Dude? What? No, 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 I'm not even joking. Stop, stop. No, no, so, I don't know if it was a bug or a bug. Oh, you're scaring what, me. What? It, it probably caught on the camera. Put the light there. Something just like, like a big thing just flew and just went. What? There's what nothing there. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That's like a high energy. That takes a lot of force. It's like the hands above it right now, setting it off. I'm not even joking. If you stop it right now, you can see. Maybe they'll see if you're wondering. It's like a little thing that flew right behind you. It was behind weird. me, like, I a, like an orb. I'm not even joking. I swear to God. Is there something on you? Yeah, I don't know. It feels, it feels itchy. I don't know. There's a lot of bugs here. Yeah, I felt like this heavy energy, and I was hearing words like "I do," "I'm here" through this. But it was so scratchy because there's so many like radio stations they scan through before they get energy to speak. The REM pod going off twice on its own is crazy to me. We're gonna continue to see if we get any words. This is getting really heavy though. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to us? One hand. Okay. One man! Yeah. Is, is the one man here able to share his name with us? Let's go inside one of the building things. We could use rods. Like, are you not playing right now? No, I'm being serious, dude. Like, I don't want to be here. It just, feels, it just feels weird being here right now. Well, I feel like something's not wanting us here. Like yeah, that, that literally, that thing went on two times. You're not, you're not messing with me, right? You didn't, you don't have like a control? No, I can't touch it. Like, look, you have to be this close to get over here and touch it. That's how it goes off when it's touched. That's the exact same way it went off earlier, but see how I had to physically touch it? Yeah. How on the did it go off on its own twice? Do you know how much force that takes? Yeah. That oh, wasn't me. Yeah. That wasn't me. Stop. I'm creeped not even yeah. close Stop. to I'm creeped <laughs> Stop. And now it's playing with me. Because I was about to put it away. Edward, are you leaving? No, it's just, it's just doing it. It's going again! Huh? Okay, okay. Just hurry up. Three times in a, like two times in a row after I touched it. Just do the, do the, do the... I have never seen REM pop it's go not, off. It's not stopping. Like before. It's, it's, something's touching it right now. Yeah, next to it, see? I'm scared. If you're here with us right now, can you touch the REM pod one more time to show that you're present? If you'd like us to leave, can you touch the REM pod? If you are an evil spirit, can you touch the REM pod? And then it stops. Look how much force this takes. That's a lot of force. I don't know. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to take it away. And we're going to use the rods to see if we get any heavy movement. All right. Okay, so I'm going to play with the rods now. Edward's scared, so he's standing back there. We also just saw like three different black widow spiders trying to go into this room, which is never a good sign. So I'm gonna stay out of there, but we're gonna see if we can get any answers from the spirits here that were touching the REM pods. So I'm holding this as still as possible. If there are spirits here at the school, can you open the rods? Thank you. Can you put the rods back to the start position? Thank you so much. 
All right, dude, you had enough. Just let's just go already. If you are here and present with us, are you a spirit of a child? If so, can you cross the rods? If you are the spirit of an adult, can you open the rods? Thank you. If you are the spirit of a man, can you continue to open the rods? If you are the spirit of a woman, can you please cross the rods for me? So they are a woman, an adult woman that we were speaking with. Did you have a connection to the school? If so, can you open the rods? If you did not have a connection to the school, but did you have a connection to the land previously, can you cross the rods? Did you die on this land? Don't, I don't ask that. Just... I'm just trying to get to know them. If you died on this land, can you cross the rods? I'm so sorry to hear that. We are really sorry about that. Are you happy with how you lived your life? Open the rods if so. Cross the rods if you're not happy with how you lived your life. If you enjoy talking to us, can you open the rods? Oh, thank you. Would you like to talk to me? No, I do not want to talk, Lissy. I want you to believe today that spirits are real. I, what, what do you mean, Lissy? I don't believe. I'm already freaked out right now. Okay, oh, wait, do... open them a little, like, higher. Higher. Perfect. Okay. Just like that. Do you want Lissy to stay here and immediately cross for yes, spread for no? So, they want me to leave. Were you moving the rods? I'm not, dude, look how steady my hands are. Can you open the rods as fast as you can to show Edward that you are here and that you want to talk to him? Okay, here, take your little, no, 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 no. Okay, I think it's haunted. Definitely. That, that's like a confirmed thing. This place is haunted, dude. Really? Does, did this place specifically change your yeah. view on the afterlife at all? The meal? I thought, no, this place definitely for sure. It's, really? it's way different in here, man. It's I mean, worse? They, I know you guys can't really see right now because it's so dark. No, it's very dark. But it's like... And look at the moon. It's yeah, And the rooftop the is gone. The full moon. Yeah. I think it's haunted and I've never felt so many heavy energies but the same sense i thought i felt something heavy and evil in that room but when i stood here i felt like i was talking to a woman who just wanted a friend a companion she felt warm and she felt inviting and she felt funny and i really enjoyed my conversation with her yeah how did you feel uh i don't know i never felt anything like this because i'm always like playing around making like weird funny videos but this kind of like opened my eyes thinking that there's actually something in this world like spirits actually yeah roam around which is which weird i think there could be multiple spirits and i think that the spirit in there was very demonic but yeah. the spirit that might have lingered in this area was very friendly it's definitely haunted today guys i traveled all the way from california to minnesota i went to a small town called duluth duluth might look beautiful from pictures you see online to all the tourist attraction stuff that is in this city it's located right on lake superior which is one of the biggest lakes in the world however duluth has quite the large amount of dark history and hauntings to it and today we're going to be checking out one of the most haunted places in minnesota the enger tower located in duluth this is not the only haunted place in Duluth. I also want to just cover this before we get into the video. There was so many creepy, just horrifying places in Duluth. There's a mansion called the Glenshee Mansion that supposedly had a double murder with extremely twisted and dark history to it. Apparently this mansion doesn't even like to cover the fact that this place is cursed and haunted because they want to protect its history. Instead of embracing it, there's been murders and a lot of sightings of ghosts in Glenshee Mansion. Many guests who tour the mansion claim to see ghostly figures and feel dark energy. Also the William A. Irvine ship in Duluth is extremely haunted as well. There is a young girl ghost named Maggie who died on the ship by unfortunate events at the age of seven and her ghost still lurks there amongst the ship today. And even Nopami, I hope I'm saying that right, which was actually featured on Ghost Adventures. This place is 108 years old. Its sanatorium once hosted tuberculosis patients and now is owned by an incorporation. It's extremely eerie in this place. It looks like a prison or jail or some just dungeon with darkness. I don't really know how to explain it. So Duluth, Minnesota has tons of hauntings and dark history, but today we're going specifically specifically to Enger Tower. This tower sits atop of a hill in Duluth and looks down over the city and the lake. Enger Tower was built in 1939. It is a five-story structure constructed of national bluestone taken from the local region. It sits atop 531 feet above the level of Lake Superior, and the tower was once dedicated to Crown Prince Olav and Crown Princess Martha of Norway on June 15th of 1939. You guys might be asking, why is this little landmark or historic tower so haunted? Let me just get into that. There are heavy rumors circulating 
circulating around this tower that claimed that in 1948, a man committed suicide by jumping off the fifth level of the tower head first. He died on impact, and the man's corpse was found hours later. The man was never identified. Over time, visitors of the park claim to see a man on the fifth level of the tower before entering the tower. When the person reaches the top, all of a sudden they claim that the man or figure they saw lurking the fifth floor is suddenly gone. Some citizens who have visited the tower also have reported seeing a figure circling the windows late at night all by itself. And during the Halloween time, it sometimes gets lit up as a pumpkin or just lit up in general, so it's easier to see the shadow figure move around at night. And today, we're going to be visiting this place hands-on for ourselves and investigating it and seeing if we can get any evidence as to if this place is just rumors or if it's truly haunted. Oh, oh, that one just went off. Can you say that again one more time, please? Where are we located? <laughs> oh, ah! Lissy! Today, guys, we're at one of the most haunted places in Minnesota. This is Enger Tower. We're going to see if the story of the haunting is really connected to why this place is haunted. Right now, it is daylight, but we're going to be coming back overnight and seeing if this place is truly haunted. Okay, so I'm gonna walk into this um, tower during the daylight to show you guys how gorgeous this little historical landmark truly is and how beautiful the view up top is. We are up so many feet right now. You can see the lake over there, Lake Superior. My boyfriend has never been on a ghost investigation this is your first time right yeah I've never... do you believe in ghosts no i want to change that tonight no, so we're going to be walking up this tower here it's quite beautiful they have this like observation the memory of bert j anger there's a whole history as to why this was built are you ready to go to the top of this tower where everything takes place no i'm not ready <laughs> let's go up there there's so many stairs in this tower this is gonna be a good workout Look at this view. This is beautiful. See how high up this tower is? You can see all of Lake Superior, all of downtown Duluth with all the hauntings, and so much more into the forest. And we're not even quite to the fifth floor of this tower yet. So we have just climbed up to the fifth floor. This is accordingly the most haunted floor of this tower where a tragic event took place and now today the figure and spirit of a man is seen lingering and walking on this floor at night. I don't want to go on this floor. It's not that bad. It doesn't feel bad. It's cold up here right now. Let's smash a like. We're doing this for you guys. I can't feel my hands. We just arrived at night at the tower. It is currently midnight. Are you ready to go check it out? Um, I'm a little scared, but... <laughs> it's completely lit up right now, and it looks so cool, but we're gonna head up there and see what we can capture. Yeah, yeah, let's head up. All right, you nervous for your first paranormal investigation? I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty excited. And nobody's here. It's pitch dark outside. It's so crazy. Look at the view of the lights. It's so pretty out here. It's right so pretty. All right, we're gonna go see. Let's go. What's up top. Let's go. All right, so we just made it to the fifth floor, and if there's a lot of wind, I do apologize. It is super windy up here, and we're gonna start this investigation. So as you guys know, on this floor at night, around this time, people have seen shadow figures of a man lurking around, and also heard him speaking, laughing, and footsteps while sitting here alone at night. So I have all of my investigation tools in here. Today we brought the scare bear. This one only goes off if something touches its head. We also have a REM pod, and this one is temperature sensitive since it's cold. We might see some of that, but if something touches that, it takes a lot of force. And of course, we also have the EMF. This will light up to red if there's something nearby and the spirit box. Okay, so I have this EMF lit up and my boyfriend over there has another one. He's going around right now, seeing if he can get his EMF to go off. And I have Scare Bear sitting here. So if anything wants to touch it, it will go off like this. So I'm gonna leave Scare Bear there and I'm going to see if we can get anything on the spirit box because I would use the rods, but it's almost too windy. Isn't it the windiest day ever? Yeah, I don't know why it's so windy, but it is also changing seasons. Yeah, we're gonna see if we can get any words with the Ed spirit box. box. Hello, spirits. If you guys would like to make yourselves known, this is uh, Lissy and this is... Uh, Trent. And we would love to hear you guys come through to say hello. Can you say hello to us? Are you guys men or women or both? Like, can you guys say one of your names? James. I heard James. You heard that? I heard James Rowland or something. Can you say one of our names to show that you're here with us? My real name? Are you angry at us? Be responsible. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. I think that's wind pushing it now. That's wind. Yeah. Alright. He's moving the bear over there. This is the hardest investigation I've ever done. Yeah, this is So much weather. So yeah, 
If this goes off, and if the teddy bear goes off, yeah. it's 100% on its own because yeah. they're pushed up against the they're wall against the They're against the wall and there's no wind hitting them. And then we can turn this one on too. It's crazy guys, I've never filmed any investigation before in this amount of wind, so I do apologize if it's very windy, but I'm trying my best to get evidence to show you guys because this place is crazy. That's going off. This one's going off. Oh my gosh, home. that's the first thing of the night. We just got that REM pod on tape. I miss the teddy this bear. Still going it's off. still going off, yeah, I miss the teddy bear. Lighting up on its own all the way over there. I wish I could get that on camera again for you guys. Yeah, the teddy bear literally went off on its own. I know, I can't believe we missed that. If you are here still with us, can you light up the REM pod or touch the teddy bear to show that you're here? Or light up the EMS? Oh, oh that one just went off. One. It's taking this one. That one's going off. Oh my gosh. Okay. Multiple touches. Hold up. And that one's against the wall. Yeah, no, that one's completely That's off crazy, me. guys. I can't even make that up. We're not touching it. We're literally across. I really want that bear to go off again because that's insane to catch on camera. Oh, that one is still That one's active. Yeah, he must be over here. Thank you for giving us a sign. Okay, not the best angle, but I did grab the spirit rods and we're going to see. It's really windy, so they're moving a lot. We're going to see if the spirits can move them against the wind. Hi, spirits. If you would love to communicate with us, can you open the rods as fast as you can against the wind as far as you can? That's not me. It's all the way against Neil. If you are the man or the spirit of the man who lurks on the fifth floor, can you please open the rods as fast as you can for me to say hello? Wow, thank you so much. I'm glad to be communicating with you. How are special to you? If so, can you cross the rods if you like it? If you don't like it, can you open the rods? One's conflicted. Yeah. They're opening. He must oh, not. He doesn't like it. This tower reminds you of a hard time in your life. Can you please cross the rods? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you have a regret from your life that you wish you can go back and relive? Cross the rods and yes. That was a fast cross. That was really fast. I'm so sorry. And it's not like the wind's doing anything because it's been no. gusting like this the whole time. Can you cross the rods if you don't like us? Oh god. If you would like to cause harm to one of us, can you open the rods as fast as you can? Ooh. You are a demonic spirit. Can you open the rods? I'm scared! Oh my god. Okay, um, I didn't expect that. Okay guys, so we're going to be using uh, this app here, and it's a ghost spirit box app, and this app here has actually given me the most clear words, even more clear than my spirit box I brought here. So we're gonna see if we can get any clear answers from the spirit who is not happy to have us here in the fifth floor of the tower. We're both gonna <laughs> ask questions, okay? Hello spirits, um, I am Lissy. I'm Birdie. And we would love to know if you would like to communicate with us tonight. Lissy, it just said Lissy, did you hear that? That was weird. I would love to know if you guys are friendly spirits. Did it just tell you to shut up? Did you say to shut up? Are you an angry spirit? Oh, I'm angry! It whispered, I'm angry in a mean voice. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh. There's a demon! How old are you? Five. Here are you a child? Here. Is there a ghost of a child here as well with us present? Uh, go away! It said go away in the clearest voice. Did you hear that? No, I didn't it said either. go away. I'm going to replay that in the video and you're going to get the chills. Uh, it's a go away. Would you like us to leave? Can you light up the EMF to show you're here? <gasps> it's lighting up right now! It is? Yeah, look! It's going on. Is this you lighting up the EMF? Bird! Birdie. It's a bird! It's a bird! Can you say the name of the place that we are at right now for us? It said Edgar! Did, Did you? it? Yeah! Did it actually? Yeah, yeah, it's an... Replay that. Replay that, editor. I, it should have picked that up. It literally said Edgar. Can you say that again one more time, please? Where are we located? Oh, I can't even make that up. <gasps> oh my gosh. What, is that? what does that mean? That one means something touched it. Thank you for showing you're here. That one's going crazy over yeah, there. Yeah, everyone going crazy over there. Can you touch the REM pod again to show that you're the man, the spirit of the man who sits on the fifth floor? <gasps> oh my god! Light it green if you like us. Oh my gosh, he said it. He said it's green. Yeah, that means that he wants us here. He does want us here. This is the most this evidence so I've gotten in a long time. It's Season still going two. off. He's that so excited. That takes a lot of force. I have never had my REM pod go off that many times. Oh, again! It went again! Oh my god! It literally said its name and it's going off. Every time I say REM pod, 
the ghost touches it. Hey guys, we are going to a place called Bombay Beach. So Bombay Beach is actually right by the Salton Sea. If you guys have never heard of this place, well, the tea is hot, guys, because this place is crazy. And I went all the way there today for you guys just to film a video and tell you guys about how crazy the story is behind this little city that's been completely abandoned. Be sure to drop a like, guys. And if this video gets to 20,000 likes, I will try to do a part two of Bombay Beach. Anyways, let me tell you guys about this place before I go there and show you guys around this place. First off, Bombay Beach is actually located right on top of San Andreas Fault. If you guys did not know, that is one of the biggest fault lines for earthquakes to happen. With this being said, there has been up to 200 earthquakes, let alone in just a day at this place, which is insane. And luckily, I did not experience an earthquake while I was there. However, there's a lot of reasons why people consider the Salton Sea and or Bombay Beach one of the creepiest places in the world. This is a actually really big body of water. I was so shocked to see how long it stretched out for when driving past it. Eventually people moved here and they built their lives along this largest lake in California. But then things went so sideways. By 1970 the lake had become so polluted that it was unbearable and the entire lake became toxic. The fish population started to die off and then washed up ashore and it smelled terrible and it still smells pretty dang bad. It smells awful. Also at one point it was a very big thriving resort community where a lot of people would just go there to have a fun getaway with their families and they'd have a vacation resort which is insane to think about because if you saw it now you would never guess. And now the residents who live there create art that they showcase all around the town and apparently they actually appreciate people coming into the town to see this artwork. Apparently it's extremely haunted. On top of there was a YouTuber who was living in the Bombay Beach area who went unexplainably missing and nobody ever found him. On top of some people believe that aliens are there to abduct people. Hear me out, it gets crazy. So there was a YouTuber YouTuber named Nicholas who was also known as Nick and he was a youtuber with about 2,000 subscribers He actually was known to live in Bombay Beach and every day he would do a live stream there However, Nick was last seen on 907 2018 around 2 30 a.m When he and his friend Austin heard a female screaming outside of the residence at Salton Sea Beach The following morning he woke up to find his friend Nick missing He went off searching for Nick and found no signs of him anywhere So there are these people like creatures that apparently haunt the grounds of Bombay Beach and the Salton Sea They are described as very tall dark black looking figure of creepy long humans that walk amongst the land that are almost alien like and a lot of people that have visited this place have claimed to have heard them. Some people say they hear giggling, footsteps, weird singing and songs in the middle of the ocean coming from nowhere and almost unexplainable sightings in the sky at night. So many people fear those things that nobody really wants to visit the Salton Sea at night because it's apparently very dangerous. With all that creepy stuff in mind guys, we are gonna go out to the Salton Sea and we're gonna explore some of the leftover buildings there see some of the art and talk about some of the crazy stuff there. We're gonna risk it all guys and let's just head out to Salton Sea. Look at this abandoned little house. It's all opened up and there's paint all through it and there's a bunch of writing. It says be bold. Over here there is the Bombay Drive-In. This is pretty iconic for photographs. I've seen a lot of people take photos right there by the sign with this old car drive-in as you guys can see. Look at all these old cars. Dang, look at this. It's completely destroyed. There's like a big bee on it. Ooh, I hate bees. That is crazy. I wonder if they destroyed it for like an art piece. I'm guessing that's what the case is, but oh my gosh, look at that. There's like glass shattered and everything. Oh my goodness. It's crazy to see a car all beat up like this. Yeah, they must have like destroyed it to fit the little, the art piece they were making here, I'm guessing, unless that really was an accident. That would be a bad accident. Same with like this one. There's a bunch of cars that are just all beat up like super crazy. Whoa, this is an old car. Look at the inside of it. Oh my gosh, tons of old cars. It's an iconic sign though, Bombay Beach. You already know, guys. Follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna definitely take a photo here and post it on the gram, guys. All right. Yeah, this place is completely gutted out. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's crazy. Let's go inside of here. There's a bunch of writing and just random doodles everywhere. There's a paintbrush on the wall here. I guess people have been painting, obviously, as you guys can see. But wait, I can step through it. <laughs> Am I gonna break it? Am I gonna break it? Oh my gosh, I'm scared. If this floor falls, guys, it's all over for me. It's all done. I hope I don't break the floor. <laughs> I'm literally scared. <laughs> I don't wanna break the floor. How many steps can I go until this place caves? <laughs> there's literally so many little random things everywhere. Oh, there's pigeons. Hi, birdies. But yeah, there's like a bunch of just random art doodled everywhere. Like, look at that cool little mushroom dude. He's pretty cool.
Another iconic video slash photo spot is the rainbow swing in the middle of the Salton Sea right here. Um, pretty crazy. There's a random table there with flowers. That's really pretty. This is super weird though, seeing like the random just abandoned artwork all amongst the salt and sea right here is crazy. I mean look at this too, like there's this table sitting here with like a whole display, like it looks like a fancy four star dinner setup right here, look at that, that's crazy. Devastation of the sea. It looks like it's my spot, queens and kings, it looks like it's my spot. Whoa, there's like a guitar in here, this is trippy. Look at all the trash residue. Oh my goodness. Let's hope there's nothing spooky in here. Imagine there's like a snake or something. I would die. Come find me. Music video was filmed at the Salton Sea. Thank you. Oh, so a music video was filmed here. So that's pretty cool. They left that there to tell people that. There's a lot of crazy writing on the walls here, which if anyone sees anything weird in the video, let me know. I wonder if this was the actual flooring of the house here. Probably was. It's all like shattered now. Oh my gosh, that pigeon there was making the most scariest noise. Oh, they scared me. This one is super strange. This one's very, very weird. Oh, this is, I know what this is. Okay, so this room right here, oh, why is Cinderella in the middle of a toilet seat? Okay, but this is like a room where I heard people hang their underpants here and they write their deepest, darkest secrets. That one's pretty inappropriate, but um, we're gonna take a look here. I think this is like a confessions room that's supposed to be pretty haunted according to this and it's weird that people are hanging their underpants here um, and their bra and they're writing their darkest confessions. I miss us here. Oh, that's deep. Why do these underpants look so kawaii? Kawaii desu. I feel like it would be wrong of me to read their deepest, darkest secret. And it looks like they had a problem with their undies, so I'm not gonna go into detail. Are those ET underpants? Oh, snap, look at this one above the sins room. So I cheated on my love because I am scared to be truly happy. That's messed up, dude. Cheating's messed up. This is the unspoken secrets room, which I heard is very haunted. So this area right here has a lot of like bad demonic stuff. People accordingly from the internet and legends of this place, they actually come in here and and they write down their worst sins and confessions in this room right here. And apparently, a lot of haunted stuff happens here. So, yeah, it's not a great spot to be, especially during the nighttime. People hear footsteps, people hear giggling, people hear weird whispers that sound demonic in their ear. Let's see if we can read some of the confessions on the wall. Yeah, there's a lot of weird confessions. They're not finding, um, oh wait, be careful who you trust. The devil was once an angel. That's dark. Yeah, there's a lot of dark, creepy stuff in here. I'm not feeling any weird energy, but this is supposedly a haunted spot. Oh, I think that's the thing right there in the middle. It actually lights up during the nighttime. I've seen videos of that online. Like, it lights up rainbow. I might insert a clip of it if I can find one online, but that's pretty weird. Oh, okay, this place I think might be haunted too. Oh my gosh, look at that painting on the wall. It says, smells like dead fish and stinky crabs, and they drew this really scary crab. This already looks intimidating. I'm literally walking through abandoned scary places all alone because why not kids all right yeah this is ah! <laughs> scary. my soul literally left my body there's birds and i thought they were coming to attack me find myself behind me i'm scared mom come pick me up okay yeah there's birds in here and they almost hit my head so <sighs> i learned that the hard way kids my soul left my body wow that is the most scariest shit i've ever seen it's literally like a mustache and nose and eyeballs with ice cream man on the side i need to go in there i swear if there's more pigeons in this building we're gonna have a little beating okay um these ice cream men are pretty cool though they remind me of something i don't know what some kind of kid's toy i used to have oh snap what is this some kind of torture pin that's creepy. This art is very unique though, but it's kind of scary. So there's a face on the ground. There's things hanging all over the ceiling and um, weird, scary, demonic looking faces. And it says lay down um, and there's an empty bed. <laughs> That's creepy. It just almost hit me again. Dude, there's pigeons everywhere. They made little nests. That's why they're having pigeon babies. <gasps> Squidward, what are you doing in this abandoned place? <laughs> oh, there's weird art in here. That's cool. Look at this. There's like paper art. That is actually really cool. This is very unique. It's like a bunch of cardboard. I don't want to break anything, but look at this. Wow, that would have taken forever. Cardboard decorated room with a cardboard chair. Sir, do you want to talk? Sir, do you want to talk about why you and your friends are harassing me? That's what I thought, bird. 
Shut it! There's a weird octopus man. Guys, it's the Natural History Museum and there's some dinosaur drawings. Those are very beautiful dinosaurs. I literally hear something in there and it sounds creepy. Is that a bird? That doesn't even sound like a bird. I hope you guys can hear that. That is so creepy. I don't know what that was but I'm not going in there. Literally walking through this completely tore down place because walking through here gets me to a place I have seen before on TikTok and stuff. One of these little exhibits up here is very interesting as we can already tell. There is literally just a bunch of toilet bowl cleaners hanging from the ceiling of this little art exhibit in this abandoned building. This is weird, but it's kind of trippy. Everything's all green in here. It's kind of cool though. Whoa, what is all this? So that's a piano made out of some kind of substance. I don't know, uh, tape and stuff maybe. And this is some kind of pool, I think. What is that inside of it? Oh, there's babies. What the heck? I kid you not. I don't really want to touch the exhibit, but look, there's little babies. It's a pool full of tiny babies. What happened to all the rest of them? People might have taken the babies out of there, but that is so weird. And then there's this exhibit right here with a bunch of the toilet bowl cleaners in a green themed kitchen. That is crazy. This feels like I'm living in a really weird video game or a very strange dream. Whoa, this is crazy. I'm surrounded by a bunch of toilet utensils. My one and only dream in life. <laughs> there's more rooms. This feels like a maze. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Those are toilet plungers on the wall with spiders. I hate spiders, so I'm probably not gonna go in there because I have a fear of spiders, okay? We don't need to know that. You infected me in a way I didn't know was possible. And they put their Insta at. Whoa, I wonder who made all this though. This is crazy. Yo, what is this? This is a really interesting art piece right here. It looks like a spaceship of some sort. And there's really shiny disco balls at the top. Well, at least they look like disco balls. That is really cool. Slow seniors at play. Wow, them poor seniors. That, ladies and gentlemen, is some art. I wonder if you could walk up into that because it literally looks like there's stairs that go through it. See, there's stairs at the base and then there's like a locked area. Obviously, there's no trespassing here, but I think it was designed to be walked up into, which is really interesting. So this is another really popular spot for photographs and stuff like that. This is a very cool art display. It is hashtag Bombay Beach TVs. Look at all of the unique art painted onto each of these TVs. That is so cool. Crazy how much art there is here, guys. And it's weird weird to think that this all used to be a very popular tourist attraction many many years ago before the sea completely went toxic that's the craziest part about it and now only 200 people live here oh this is trippy oh i love how they added a face mask they updated it you know for 2020 there is a lot of cool art this is really neat and unique that almost looks like a parrot but i don't see a parrot head so oh my gosh darn pigeons so this is one of the things that i've been trying to find for a while it took me a minute to find it but this is a futuristic sort of home display of art that i've been seeing everywhere on tiktok and social media about bombay beach so this is going to be really cool this is probably going to be my favorite part of the video because it looks super unique from what i've seen of it let's go check it out as you guys can see inside of here it's like glowing there's lights and there's huge disco ball things i don't know if i can step oh it's foam yeah you can't step on that it's literally foam wow but yeah i'm hoping i can get in there it's so cool looking but look at that guys i'm gonna try to zoom in so you guys can see there are disco balls and stuff spinning around that would have been so cute for photos and lights maybe like solar powered lights those are so neat that's a shame it has to be locked off no it looks so cool inside of there I heard something behind me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are exploring a ghost town for 24 hours. We are actually in a town called Calico and it's in the middle of the desert and it was completely abandoned. Believe it or not, years ago, a ton of people used to live in this ghost town and a lot of people came here to actually mine and live their lives like everyday people, but it became 100% abandoned. So today we're going to be walking around this town and seeing all the crazy stuff here and exploring a haunted mine, which is going to be super creepy. It's actually called the Maggie Mine and there's a bunch of different ghost stories and folk tales all around this town that I'm excited to talk to you guys about. Also guys, be sure to drop a like if you guys are excited. Let's try to get this video to 20,000 likes and without further ado, let's go explore. So here is a 
part of the mine shaft of Maggie Mine. I think that door right there actually has entrance inside from a mine, but that's closed. I have to find the actual entrance to this place. Okay, guys, so I just got tickets to go into the Maggie Mine, and I'm a little bit creeped out. This is a thousand foot cave, and we're gonna explore it and see if we find anything creepy inside of there. I don't know what to expect, because like I said, I've never been in this, but like I said, it used to be a real mine shaft, and there is a ton of different ghost stories inside of this cave that we're going to be investigating and looking into, guys. So drop a like, because we're doing some crazy stuff today. Before I entered the Maggie Mine, I was walking around the waiting room, and there was a bunch of very strange animatronics. Honestly, they were very creepy, let alone. What was mine to Calico? Let's push this and see. Oh, you want to know what we dream of? Yeah, well, tell me, boy. It was silver. Silver, Here boy. Calico, we have silver fever. Silver I'm a little bit scared, discovered. honestly. We also got this animatronic man here. Also, it was a little bit scary. He has a guitar. And there was a lot of history about the Maggie Mine all around the waiting room and some of the stories about the mine. So it was all the way in 1881 when this mine was operating. So that was quite a long time ago, guys. And this is some of the trail of the mine. Wow, that looks seriously so old. These photos are definitely old, but it's pretty cool to see what it used to look like. So this is the entrance to the mine, guys. We're about to go inside now, and it looks like a pretty long way. So let's see what we can find in here. All right, so in the beginning of this, we're seeing a lot of different fossils for all my rock lovers out there. I collect a lot of different rocks, so it's pretty fascinating. But I'm not gonna lie, it's um very dark in here, and it goes down a pretty long way, so I'm not sure how to feel about this. I'm also gonna ask you guys, when you guys are watching this video, to like pause if you guys hear anything weird or see anything, because I might miss something. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys see or hear anything. It's so creepy. Oh, is that like a shaft? Oh my gosh, it is. There's like a ladder here with a bucket. Oh, there's some kind of like animatronic right here. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Look at him. I don't know if I told you guys, but there has been a lot of reports of singing heard in this mine when you're all alone. Right now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm standing all alone in this cave. I'm gonna listen to make sure I don't hear anything weird. Sometimes people say they hear people hitting the wall like they're mining and also mine shaft sounds like carts moving all by themselves when there is no carts down here. And there has been some deaths back in the days when people are trying to explode areas to get through the shafts of this mine and it's super sad and super scary. Oh, I thought I heard something. That creeped me out so much. But let's keep walking and see if we catch anything. I don't know why, but in this specific spot, it feels extremely cold. And I don't know if you guys know, but like when they say you're in like a colder spot, there could be like a spirit presence. And I don't know why, but right here, I get like the weirdest feeling. And this spot is super weird too, because there's like holes that go pretty high up into the ceiling. Those were such a long ways too. That's so weird. My shadow looks like it's dulled. Oh, what is that? Some kind of like animatronic. The fact that they put like animatronics in here in like different spots is just the creepiest part about walking through this. Like imagine if they just moved on their own. I think that's creepier than the cave itself, honestly. I thought I heard like a growl in here. Yo, I'm not even tripping. It's so dark back there, look at that. Ugh, I don't even want to be in here, but I love you guys, so I'm doing it for you guys. Hello, any spookies in here? Shadow is so big, look at my shadow. It smells weird down here. If there was an earthquake though, that'd be so scary. Ew, I thought I saw something back there. What is that? Some kind of animatronic. I don't like that. I feel like he just moved. Wait, did he? Why did the camera get all blurry all by itself? I feel like that guy shook. Okay, I'm creeped out. We're getting away from there. Honestly, this is one of the creepiest places I've ever walked through. And if you guys were in here, you would understand what I'm saying because you're walking through a cave all by yourself with little animatronics all through it. No one's here. It's like pitch black without my light that I brought, which I don't have in front of me right now. My assistant's carrying it. And it's just so eerie. I don't know what it is about walking through a cave that just creeps me out, but just everything about it just feels definitely pretty eerie. And like the energy is super high. Oh, I, I get really cold right here too. There's like certain areas of this cave where I just feel colder than others. Oh, now I feel like super hot. I'm not kidding. I just feel like something just touched my leg. I don't know what that was. Maybe it was like a bug. Okay, I'm like creeped out. Come on, let's go. So this is the... Oh my gosh, that scared me so bad. I heard like a breath. This is the dead man's drift. So large opening areas like this were often called stopes. I think this is the spot.
saw the mine where a death actually took place. So right now, it's super creepy, but where this little animatronic is talking and holding a show, it's actually one of the spots of the cave where a death took place. And I just feel negative energy right here. I haven't like caught anything super weird. I did feel something like brush across my leg, but right here it feels so much hotter than it should. And it just feels really eerie. Okay, so right now we're gonna take an EVP, which is basically where I'm going to record on my phone and say hello a bunch of times and see if anything picks up on my microphone. I doubt it will happen. I'm not like, you know, sure what I'll pick up, but if I pick up any weird noise, I'll put it back in the video. So right now we're going to open my microphone on my phone if I can find it. Hello? We're gonna see if the microphone picks up anything. Hello? I thought I heard something behind me. Hello? We'll say it a few more times and see if my mic picks up anything creepy. Hello? Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. And we're gonna replay that in the video and see if my mic picked up anything strange. I saw the weirdest thing back there, pan the camera. I don't know if it's gone. But I thought I saw like feet, literally from there to there, just walking, like not kidding. Why do I always miss the creepy things? This cave is like definitely haunted. There's ghost tours here that run through the whole day. And right now it is pretty late and we're walking through it. So we just don't know what we're going to capture on tape. Okay, so I think we're almost out of the cave, guys. And I'm curious if I caught anything on tape that's a little bit irregular or strange or creepy. But it is really creepy down here. Now we're finally at the exit. No more spooky cave for me. I'm getting out of here. The exit only. Bye, spooky, scary cave. I won't miss you. Dangerous mine shafts. Do not pass beyond this point. Oh yeah, is that a challenge? So this is another haunted location and this is the haunted schoolhouse. I actually talked about this place a little bit in the last video, but let's walk up to the window and see if there's anything creepy inside. So this is actually a picture of what the schoolhouse used to look like. It actually was completed in 1955. This is what it looked like in 1885. The actual schoolhouse had kids inside of it when this town was very small. And here is what it looks like now. Um, hopefully you guys can see. I know there's a lot of shadows and stuff, but it tried to keep like the same vibe of the schoolhouse inside and replicate it as good as possible. It's really creepy looking though, honestly. Especially like all the doodles on the whiteboard. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there is actually a lot of ghost stories in here of students being seen sitting in their desks when nobody's in here at all. It's actually 100% locked off. You cannot get inside, so that's pretty creepy. So this is one of the the gift shops that a ghost named Lucy is often appeared to be seen. She is often wearing a black dress and she walks around between the gift shop and the street ahead of us where her house used to be during Calico back when it was a city. Also pretty off topic but Calico has some pretty cool gift shops so I walked around some of them and looked at some of the cool items they had. They also had a really awesome dog gift shop where I found some cute little decorations that actually had to do with my puppy Angel. They had a Brussels Griffin sign and my mom got one for her Boston Terrier. What's also crazy is there is another ghost that often walks around Calico and people say that he appears as a worker at this actual place. He has a long beard and he usually greets people that enter Calico and you can see him walking on these roads here or at the main entrance of the park and then people say they turn around and he's no longer there and they have no sight of where he went. This is one of the most windiest days I have ever filmed a video and I do want to apologize to you guys if, you know, there's not a lot of my face because my hair is blowing around like crazy and it's hard to use my microphone in the wind like this but we are by a bottle house right now check this out it's literally made out of complete bottles and the funny thing is and i think there was this back when the town was running they used to actually take bottles and make little houses with them and i think that's cool that they still have this here bangs i look like blonde dora the explorer 
There has been so many stories, especially of a little boy running around wearing a cowboy hat who's gone into the candy shop and the soda shop and people say that he runs inside. He asks for ice cream and confuses the workers and then he runs away and there's nobody there. And he's also been seen waving through windows of buildings like this one where there's nobody inside and it's completely locked off. So people think a little boy snuck into a building and is just waving inside the window. They go inside and nobody's inside the building at all. So as you guys know, Lucy Lane haunts a lot of this town and this I think is the actual location of Lucy Lane's house and this is one of the most haunted places in Calico. So this is the original Lucy Lane house and they have original artifacts from when she lived here. So here is an original bathroom of hers. Look how small the little bathtub is though. That's insane guys. Here is also another original area of her and that was her and her husband. They are both said to be seen in the park these days. It's weird seeing like an old design of a house. And last but not least, another room here. I'm not really sure what this part of the room would have been, but they do have pictures of her everywhere in this little house, which is really fascinating. It looks like it's some kind of tool of equipment. Let me know if you guys know what that is. I have no clue. And then they also have this really huge old picture of what Calico looked like when it was actually open to the public and people lived here. I met some super sweet supporters. What are you guys' names? My name is Peyton and Peyton and Phoebe. Oh, nice meeting you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching the channel. You're welcome so, so much. There is rumor of this rocking chair actually moving all by itself and one of the ghosts apparently does rock it all by itself but right now I hate to break it to you guys it's just really windy but who knows I mean it is rocking all by itself so you just never know kids. Oh they have those birds the chukar. I saw a bunch of them running around the streets here. One of the birds that you will see here in Calico. Who is this man? Okay so right now we are walking up to a graveyard in Calico. We exited the area of Calico itself. I have never walked up to this but this is where they buried the actual residents of Calico during the time when the town was operating. This is the area where they actually had their actual burial sites. One of the creepiest parts of this is that their graves are made of rocks. So as you guys can see there's like a flower in this grave and there's people buried all beneath me. This is probably one of the creepiest spots I have ever been to on my channel is just standing in a graveyard. All due respect though to all the people who lost their lives while they were living out here. This area as well as some of the other areas in the park is one of the most haunted spots in Calico and there is a ton of activity at this graveyard especially at nighttime. One little gravestone right here I'm not sure whose it is. It is for baby boy Mudget son of Leroy and Mulchi Mudget. That is so sad. I think it was a little boy who died on that grave and there's a bunch of like planks on some of these other graves in the graveyard. So guys, I am now leaving Calico, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's historical kind of spooky video. If you guys did, be sure to subscribe button to join the family and be sure to drop a like if you guys want me to do more videos where I travel to scary places like this in the future. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Congratulations to today's daily shout out winners. If you wanna win a shout out, leave a nice comment down below for a chance to win a shout out in my next video. So that was it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit the subscribe button, be sure to drop a like, and be sure to leave a comment down below. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. I ended up going back to the world's most haunted museum again. Have I ever been into my haunted museum by myself? The answer is no, because I do not go into my haunted museum by myself because I'm too terrified. Two days ago, I went to Zach Begin's haunted museum. I refused to look at the big box, but accidentally did. Now I'm in the hospital. The very first thing they have us do is sign a waiver. They basically said they're not responsible for us fainting, getting bloody noses, dying. <laughs> Yes, you heard me. I went before, actually two other times before. One time I made a video on it, the other time I actually didn't make a video on it, but I went with my best friend and we had a lot of fun there, nothing too crazy happened. And then I just went back for the third time just the other day and it was insane. So let me catch you guys up and tell you guys about this place, just in case you guys are confused or maybe you've never heard about what this place is. Let me explain it. So basically Zach Bagans is from Ghost Adventures, if you guys have ever seen it, and he has collected a huge collection 
collection of paranormal items that are either cursed, allegedly haunted, things that had to do with murder cases, possessions, really horrible items, pretty much anything just horrifying. And he has confiscated it into this museum that he actually purchased, which was once a mansion. So it's this big, huge mansion on the end of the street of Vegas. Um, and the mansion that he actually purchased to display all the items for uh, actually has a really dark occult history to it. Apparently he bought it from a girl who was warning him not to buy it and saying that the basement of this place was like the epicenter of evil. Um, I remember one time I went into the basement and I never went back down since then. I still don't plan on going back down there. It was horrible. Um, the energy in this place was crazy. As you walk along in there, there's rooms with like dolls. I know specifically there was like one closet full of just all haunted dolls, ones that have been possessed, ones that have seen like been talking and caused horrible things to happen in households. I went into the waiting lobby and I actually filmed some of the stuff on the display area because you can film in this room but not the rest of the museum. I really really wished I could have filmed some of the stuff inside of there but I can see why because it would take the experience away. And this is definitely a place you guys would want to check out yourself before I spoil anything too crazy on the inside. I'm going to tell you about these items and a few things that happened to me along my journey of this place but it's um some crazy crazy stuff. Um so yeah as you can see here in this club I am inside of the waiting lobby which had some scary cursed looking dolls outside of it. The first curse item that I really really want to bring up in this video that always makes me feel uneasy that I never even had the courage to step into the room of is a haunted doll that I might have covered in a few videos before called Peggy. So Peggy the haunted doll has a very dark, gruesome backstory to her. Um, every time I go to the museum and I have the option of going into the room to see Peggy, I just feel like there's something telling me not to go inside of that room. And I do most of the rooms. This room, I can feel the energy outside of the door. Like something just feels off. Like. I feel like I'm dizzy outside of the door. I feel just heavy energy. I feel a little horrified to go into that room because they tell you if you want to enter the room with this Peggy doll that's cursed, that you do have to say hello and goodbye just like the same way you'd use in a Ouija board. I, for one, will not do that. And what's inside of this doll does not seem to be the soul of a little girl. It seems to be the soul of a demon. So let me explain the backstory of Peggy the doll just a little bit for you guys so you guys can understand where I'm coming from with this. Peggy was given to a paranormal investigator by her terrified former owner. The doll is believed to be haunted and trigger migraines and chest pains, nosebleeds, and even car accidents and have been set upon the bad juju that this doll brings to people. And psychics actually speculate that she is Jewish and possibly a Holocaust victim, even though we all know that there is something pretending to be a little girl from some past event inside of this doll. Also, another really creepy legend about this doll is that this doll was so bad back in the days when they first put pictures and videos of this doll online. Many people suffered similar symptoms from just looking at the doll. Like I said, the nosebleeds, the heart attack. Actually, one woman did look at her online and had a heart attack immediately after staring at a photo of Peggy and just all these other really crazy bad things that have happened from just looking at a simple photo of her just like this one here on the screen. So be careful, kids. Um, but I just felt very heavily affected outside of the actual room of the physical doll. Um, another thing I want to put out is that it looks like this in her cage, which I might have shown on the screen already, or her little pin that she's contained in. There's a bunch of creepy dolls around her, and she is wearing like a cross necklace to protect whatever she has inside of her. And they do have a spear box running 24 7 in her room where she resides, where guests can ask her questions like, Peggy, how are you? And how old are you? When they tried to say, Hi, Peggy, it would say, Get out. Out in like an evil demonic voice. One lady even claims that when she opened a photograph of Peggy on her computer that her computer froze on the picture and the entire room she was in went cold. She then said she felt someone in the room with her and could hear them moving around. There's just so many horrible things online if you guys want to look it up and take time to go more in depth about this doll. I just advise you to be careful because the in-depth history of Peggy the doll cursing people and having effects through a computer screen is insane. The next creepy doll experience I had at Zach Bay Megan's museum was a doll named Lily. So Lily, I believe, has a also pretty dark backstory to her and a scary look all around. If you guys take a look at Lily the doll here, I will put her on the screen. You will notice her hair is particularly pretty realistic looking and that's funny because she does have real human hair atop of her head. So Lily the doll actually came from Salem, Oregon. She was actually inside of an antique shop where she was causing some mischief before Zach purchased her and put her in in the museum. The antique dealer said that he had began having reoccurring nightmares about a little girl 
who had a very bad accident once he got the Lily doll in his shop. He even claims that the details of the nightmares he was having were too disturbing to tell to people. He then put the doll in his antique shop where a little girl came in with her parents and spoke to Lily for three hours straight, catching the attention of everyone in the store. The little girl was speaking to her as if Lily the doll were a real child, and then told the staff working at the antique shop that Lily is a little girl that was subjected to extreme violence, which is horrifying because the people at the shop didn't even tell the little girl that Lily had any sort of weird stuff going on or attachment to anything like haunted. They just kept her there in hopes to sell her, but that little girl had the experience with the doll on her own. Then when Zach finally acquired Lily, an older woman, as seen in the photo, had to physically touch Lily to get her down from where she was perched high inside of the case. At the time, the older woman looked flush and began to panic. She repeated over and over, I must wash my hands, I must wash my hands, I must wash my hands. She was then immobilized as she began to have sharp pains inside of her stomach. Zach felt immense energy the moment he saw the doll and he just knew he had to get it for his collection. But now at the museum, there are a few guests that come inside and say that they feel affected and very sad when they look at Lily the doll due to some very dark connection or backstory tied with this doll. Who knows? the full and detailed backstory really truly is or if whatever is inside of this doll is not just a child but yet a demon once again. So another item I really want to bring up and talk about that I didn't talk about I don't think before maybe slightly mentioned is that this museum has the actual devil's rocking chair. This was featured in the Conjuring movies The Devil Made Me Do It and the story behind this chair is horrifying. I'm sure that maybe a lot of you guys have heard of this but I did come right up close like feet away from the real devil rocking chair and I never really got affected by this item when I went through the museum. Honestly I'm pretty shocked because all the stories online about this thing are horrifying but I never felt like any weird energy but I do want to share what the dark backstory of this chair is because a lot of people that go through the museum they opposite and say that they do feel affected by this item. So the devil's rocking chair was actually infamous for being connected to Ed and Lorraine Warren which are very famous paranormal investigators. I'm sure you guys know about that and scary enough I believe that it is true that the day that Zach Jack Biggins got the chair from Lorraine Warren was the same day that she sadly ended up passing on, which is very, very strange and suspicious timing. Actually, this chair was kind of putting off some very bad energy onto guests in the museum for a while. That a few years ago, Zach Biggins actually chose to close down that exhibit after a group of guests experienced horrible, traumatic events after looking at the chair. And not only did the guests experience these effects, but he did as well in his own home. Because of the disturbing reactions of the chair. Six people all shared the same disturbing uncontrollable crying, one of them being a guest who also collapsed directly above the devil's rocking chair on the stairs. Bacon's clarified that the chair is housed directly under the set of stairs in the house that he built the museum. I'm so surprised that after those events happened that he still decided to leave the chair in the museum or even be around it himself because if I was him, I would be freaked out. But needless to say, I walked right past that chair and I did not have any effect, thank goodness. The only thing, and I'm going to leave this for the very end of the video, which is now that has affected me each and every time that I've been through this really really creepy curse museum was this one room called the demon house. Every time that I've been through this, which the three times I've gone to this museum, um, I felt the exact same way standing in this little room. So the demon house was a house where terrible things happened, of course, as we could assume. People were possessed by demons and there was one kid who even walked straight up a wall. Basically, I think it's related, like I said, to a cult stuff and evil terrible thing. Anyway, short story short so I don't go too far in depth with this one. They tore down the house where all this evil stuff was taking place and they bulldozed it down and they took the soil from under the ground of the house, some of the bricks and the stairwell and they rebuilt the house, the actual pieces of this possessed place and they made like a little display of it in the museum and every single time when I'm standing in that room I nearly just like I start swaying and I feel like I can't control my body and it's super horrifying like I get dizzy I feel like I can't breathe like something's trying to get me to stop breathing this last time I literally didn't even want to look at the display because I felt so uneasy and sick that I literally just stepped out of the room early I did not want to look at the display I looked at it the last two times this time I couldn't do it. I something was making me not want to be there and that actually was kind of coincidental because two other people in the same tour as me had the same exact reaction to the same exact thing another girl in there was saying I can't do it I can't do it and she just looked down refused to look at the display and we never had this problem the whole tour until now and same with this girl she 
never walked out of anything. She even did Peggy and the Divic box, which is like the world's most haunted item. And in this room, she felt the same exact way that I did. I was like, do you feel dizzy? She's like, yeah, like something can't like let you breathe. And I was like, same. And we both were horrified that we had that same experience. And then I told her that the other two times that I was there at the museum, I had the same exact feelings and reactions. And the last two other times I was thinking maybe because I was wearing a mask, like I was just dizzy or, you know, air wasn't circulating, but no, I'm not crazy because other people experience the same thing. But guys, all in all, this museum I think is a great visit if you guys are brave enough and um, willing enough to see some of the world's most cursed items. It never fails to amaze me. I just can't even explain the feeling of walking through that house. The energy is heavy. You could definitely tell that it's real. Like if you're a skeptic, if you don't believe in ghosts or you think it's fake, I wouldn't recommend you go there and mess around and mock the items because good chances will be that you get cursed or something happens. So definitely if you guys don't believe in ghosts, if you guys want to, go check out that place because it will change your entire opinion. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's story time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and hopefully learned something spooky or had a good scare. Um, I definitely do, like I said, recommend you guys check out the museum if you guys want to see some scary stuff. If you guys ever go to Vegas, definitely give it a check out. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe button if you guys enjoyed and drop a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know, do you guys believe in ghosts? Yes or no? It's been Lizzie. I'll see you guys in the next video and until next time, peace out. Bye.